Okay, I get emails from people all the time who are looking to get going with TIG welding. And aside from buying a machine and stuff like that, they don't really know exactly what they need to get going and why these things are so important to have. So today we're gonna to go over five of the most important things that I need when I am welding. Besides a helmet and a machine, obviously. And believe me, the last couple of things I'm gonna give you on this list here, definitely things that a lot of people would not think to have when they get going. Okay, so the first thing I absolutely need at my welding table while I am working is these things here. These are welding pliers. You can sometimes hear people call these MIG pliers, but generally from what I see, a lot of people refer to them as welding pliers, so let's just call them that. Now, these things are very important for a lot of really crucial things. The first really crucial thing is that they are gonna help you to assemble your TIG torch correctly. Now, sometimes when you are using your hands to assemble your TIG torch, what is gonna happen is that as you are welding, these components are gonna be heating up and cooling down. And what can happen very frequently is these parts can become loose and untighten themselves very easily without you noticing them. Sometimes when these components come loose, they can cause a gas leak that you are unaware of. And they can unfortunately cause some of these components to become damaged really quickly. So tightening things with your hands might not be the best way. That's where these pliers come in handy. Handy. <laughs> what you're gonna do is use these to just give things a tight squeak together. We are not gonna reef on these and make them super tight. Having things too tight is obviously not a great thing for these components as well. Especially while parts are hot after welding, you can use these things to tighten or loosen your components. And not only this, these things are gonna be great to help keep your cup clean as well. Even with wire feed or MIG welding, you can use these to clean out the inside of a dirty cup. And you absolutely should be doing the same for your TIG cup. If your TIG cup looks like this, you should use your welding pliers. Put one end of the plier into the welding cup and you can spin it around like this. With the help of a wire brush, after the fact, you can make sure that these things stay nice and clean. And one of the most important tips about welding pliers that you might not think of is you can use them to pick up hot stuff. When you're finished a weld, you wanna have a look at it. Use your pliers, don't use your hands. You can pick things up, have a good look at them. These things are made of really tough steel. They're not gonna heat up terribly fast. When you're working on something on your table and you wanna flip it over, weld the other side or whatever you're doing, you can use your pliers and do this, spin things around safely without melting your hands off. So I would say the one thing that I'm constantly looking for, because I lose them all the time, Okay, they're right here. This is absolutely the most important thing that I prefer to have next to me while I'm working. Okay, we can move them for now. Okay, the second thing, and this is extremely important, and I always recommend spending money on these, and this is getting good gloves. Now, like I said, you don't have to spend a ton of money on some of the other gear that you could buy for your TIG welding setup. However, the one exception I do make is for spending good money on good gloves. Now, personally, these are my favorite gloves here. These are from Defiant Metal. I have used these for years. I used them even before I was sponsored by them. They are genuinely one of the best welding gloves I've ever used. They fit my hands perfectly. They come in a couple different colors, so that's a bonus as well. But do some research. Find out what brand of gloves or what fit of gloves works best for you. You need to make sure that you can feel the material you are working with properly. Feeding filler material in your hands is a vitally important part of TIG welding. If you're welding with gloves where you can't really feel things that well in your fingers, trying to learn how to feed filler material is gonna suck. Having gloves like these are gonna give you great dexterity. You can feel everything really well. Now, another thing you might not think of is that when I'm working with dirty materials and I'm doing measuring, I'm doing layout and things like that, having good dexterity is also gonna allow you to work with gloves on as well. You can see here in this example, I'm measuring all this stuff up. I'm building fences. I'm making jigs on my strong hand tools table here. Working with a tape measure, using pens and stuff like that is super easy to do with good gloves. Like I said, honestly, if there's one thing I would probably recommend actually spending good money on, it would probably be gloves. Like I said, there's lots of different brands out there. Find what works best for you. Now, number three here today might surprise you, but this is a very important part of my setup. And it is this here. This is Lemon Pledge Dust Spray. I stand by this as being the best lens cleaner that you can use. It fills in little scratches. It actually repairs stuff to almost being brand new if it isn't damaged too bad. If you use this stuff and you spray it on, really rub it in a couple times, you are gonna notice this makes a big difference with how clean your stuff comes up. You can use it on your welding lens like this here. I have this eye protection from Heat Wave Apparel. You can spray it on these things as well and they are good as new after you do it. And the best thing about this stuff, when you start welding, it smells incredible. So not only is this gonna clean your lens up real nice, but you're gonna smell like a bunch of lemons as well. <laughs> 
Now, number four on the list of things that are very important to me while I am working. What you're looking at here might confuse you a little bit. That's right, what the heck is all this stuff? What we have here is a combination of different clamps. We have a combination of different blocks and stuff like that. Some of them made of metal and some of them made of wood. What the heck am I doing with this stuff? Let me explain. I have heard people describe stuff like this as using steadies. What I mean by this is essentially if you have any position where you're gonna be welding and you're a little bit unstable, one of my favorite things to do is to put a clamp on something and rest my hand on this instead of the workpiece. In some circumstances, this might elevate your hand above the workpiece a little bit, which helps out with angles sometimes. If you're welding something that you can't really clamp down, you need it to stay in a certain position like this piece of pipe here. What you can do is you can put a clamp on the edge of the table and then guess what? You can take another clamp and clamp it to the first clamp here. That's right, clamps on clamps. What you're gonna be able to do is now you have a safe place to put your hand where you're not leaning against the workpiece. You can keep your hand nice and steady, not rocking around all sketchy. Sometimes if I'm welding a big cabinet or something like this, like you're looking at this here, I might not wanna rest my hand on the side of it. So what I'll do is actually take like a pipe clamp or something like that, put it down the edge like this, and then boom, there we go. We now have something I can run my hand along instead. Now the different blocks. Let's start with the aluminum ones here. Seriously, I have had these things for literally like over 10 years, and I have used them probably more than any of my welding equipment. If you ever need a shim that you can use to raise something up on the table, these things are absolutely perfect for that. They conduct heat really well. Sometimes you can use these to raise up a little piece that you are practicing on. You will find that it gives you better visibility. You can see things more clearly. And again, similar to clamps, sometimes you just wanna rest your hand on one of these. It'll give you a better angle on something. Now the wood blocks are also really cool as well because there will be surfaces of material that you do not want to scratch. Wood is a lot softer than this piece of metal, obviously. So if you need to put something on a piece of metal that you wanna keep nice and clean, don't wanna scratch the surface or nothing and you need a better angle, this simple piece of wood can be absolutely priceless to have on deck. All right, so this last one on the list here, this is number five. This is definitely gonna be something that most people will not ever think about. And this will be a foam roller and something to take care of my forearms while I am welding. Now, everybody out there, listen up for a second. I welded professionally in production TIG welding for 20 years. There would be days when I literally would not even talk to another person that worked with me. I would just be welding the entire time. Now, when you're welding and you're doing something over and over all day, you're gonna notice that you are going to get sore. This is something that I genuinely encourage people to pay attention to. If you are starting to experience discomfort with your neck or your back, you need to take a break and you need to take care of it. This foam roller here was not even that expensive and I've literally used it for years. But when I was working full time, I would throw this thing on the floor next to me very often. It would literally only take like less than two minutes to do, but your neck and your back start to feel much better as you do this regularly. Like I said, I was welding 10 hour shifts of doing the same thing over and over. Every hour, two hours, just taking a two minute break to roll my neck and my back out, it was certainly worth it. Now something like this, whether it's a golf ball, lacrosse ball, tennis ball, doesn't really matter. I always recommend using this to kind of roll out your forearms as well as your arms in general. Using a golf ball under your hand like this, especially if you've been welding all day, it feels absolutely incredible. I've actually had some serious injuries in my wrists and stuff before, and stopping and taking the time to get ahead of injuries, again, just a couple minutes a day. Pull the plug like two minutes ahead of your coffee break or something. Just fire one of these across your forearms, above your elbows, and on your hands and stuff like this. I guarantee that you're gonna be able to fend off injuries before they actually start to occur. So these things are extremely important to make sure that you take care of your body as well as your setup and your welding area. But there are other very important things that you need to get together before you start TIG welding. So check this episode out here next. These are some other really important things that you're gonna need to get together for your TIG welding setup that's gonna make life a lot easier for you. So go ahead, make sure you watch that episode next. Do a random act of kindness for a stranger today. My name is Dusty, Phil and Shell. We will talk soon. Peace.